Good morning. It is October 28th, and I hope you're ready to joyride through the book of Philippians with me. We are getting really close to the end of this letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to uh, some of his best friends in the whole world, or at least I believe they were uh, the, the church at Philippi. Today we're in Philippians 4 through uh, 4 through 7, and the subtitle of my Bible is Final Exhortation. So here we go. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know, that's a passage that many of us as believers hold on to. Paul's not talking about a fake kind of rejoicing. He's not talking about, hey, you know, look at me. Even in the midst of pain and suffering, all those things, I can still raise my hand. Uh, the, the rejoice word there is the Greek word kairo, uh, charis, uh, where we actually get the word um, uh, eucharist. It means to celebrate. It means to give thanksgiving for what you have. I often think about, what can I rejoice for today? Well, most of the time I wake up in a bed uh, with a mattress that, that I paid more for uh, than many people make in a year. I can rejoice that I have food in my refrigerator. I can rejoice that uh, I often tell people that my wife still loves me, that my family's doing okay. Uh, every day we can find some way to rejoice. And Paul says, I mean, he's in prison. He, he thinks he's going to lose his life soon. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's not a fake rejoicing. It's a deep seated rejoicing that he has found some kind of reason to celebrate life. And I think if we're going to if we're going to live life right now in the midst of a lot of mess going on, we need to find some way to rejoice for what we have. Verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. What's he talking about there? Is he talking about just be a gentle person, a gentleman? Um he's actually saying, you know what? We need to find some kind of kindness in our lives where we cannot retaliate for everything that comes our way, um, where we can actually just have this inner strength to not retaliate, to, to not lash out. I mean, we're within a week of this election, and we've all seen hundreds, if not thousands, of advertisements for our favorite political party, and most of them. Most of them, I would guess 90% of them, maybe more, have more to do with lashing out against the other person than what we're going to do for our party. And Paul says, you know, if you're going to rejoice in the Lord always for what you have, let, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Violence isn't the way to anything. The Lord is near. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Love teaching on this. The word anxious there is merimano. Uh, the Greek word, it means meris, means parts. Do not be anxious. When we think about anxiety, what is anxiety? Now, we have a lot to be anxious about, right? But for most of us, our anxiety is more of an inner, we kind of we stir it up from inside of ourselves, right? I mean, it's, it's late at night. It's 2 a.m. You're looking at your clock. You're thinking about what you have to do tomorrow. You're thinking about the news you just heard. It's these inner parts that seem to be coming apart. And Paul says, you know what? You need to let that go. Do not be anxious about anything, anything, anything. You need to find that inner peace, that, that inner presence to rejoice. And then he goes on, but in every situation, by prayer, petition, and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We're only a few weeks from Thanksgiving. Uh, three ways to pray. The first is uh, by prayer. And the Greek word there is ukomaya, ukomaya, which means a wish, a prayer, or a vow. With petition, this is the desis prayer, to make a particular need known. And then the thanksgiving is the itemia, which means to ask. So what are those functions? The first one, the ukomaya, a formal prayer. This may be our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This may be the prayer that you know by heart, that you've prayed over and over don't be anxious about anything. Go through these prayer steps. I've done this many, many times when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm not feeling like I should rejoice. I will go through these prayer steps. So the first one is that formal prayer that I know by heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, the second one is petition. And this this is the um, this is the, the help me prayer. This is like, I need help, God. I need help. This is kind of the guttural prayer. Like, please, God, can you do something? We all know how to do this prayer, right? 
So if we start with the first one, our Father in Heaven, or maybe a more formal prayer, and then we, we kind of go to the second one, God, I need help. I need you to help me. I need you to calm me down. I need you to give me wisdom. Um, over the last six, eight months, I prayed for so many times for, for wisdom, and I prayed for God's voice. I need to hear you, God. I need, I need desperately need to hear from you. So start with the formal prayer. Move to the, the more like, you know, I just, I just need, need your help. And then the Atimai of the Thanksgiving is the list. And I think we, we make a prayer list. We have a prayer list in our church. We have a prayer team. So these are the things I want to pray about. I want to pray about the people that are sick. I want to pray about our community. I want to pray about, you know, healing. I want to pray about the election. I want to pray about whatever's going on. Paul is serious about prayer and, and not so much about a formula. All oh, this is a really good formula. And I think at the first of the year, we actually went through the prayer, right? Posture, attitude. Um, but Paul says, in 1 Corinthians 5, 16, he says, pray continually. Pray all the time. Never cease to give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ. Be aware. Be gentle. Do not be anxious. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. Good and bad. I, I believe God hears our prayers all the time. I believe it's one of the best ways for us to get through our day. You know, I'll often pray my way through my day, depending on what's going on. It seems like when things are going good, I fail to pray. You're probably like that, too. Um, I, I think we need to pray even in the good times. We need to pray prayers of Thanksgiving. We need to pray prayers for others. Um, just pray your way through life. And then he ends this passage this way. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. And many of us understand what that means. Some of you may not. What is the peace of God that transcends all understanding? It's when we feel peace, even in the midst of, of turmoils and crisis, in, the, in pandemics, in loss, where we feel we're rejoicing, but it's not, it's not we're throwing a party, but we have an inner peace. We have an, an inner um, ability to get through the day, uh, which transcends all understanding. People go, how do you do that? I, I don't quite understand that. And that's when we go, you know, this is, this is God. Um, this is God saying something to me which transcends all understanding, and he will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, next week, my favorite passage in all of Philippians. I've taught on this passage more than any other passage. I've given this little talk to football teams, high school football teams. It is one of my favorite. Hey, if you enjoy these, I've actually lumped them all together on our Facebook site in a folder. Uh, I had someone say, hey, I'd like to use these maybe as a Bible study. If you'd like to do that, they're in the folder called Joyride through Philippians. Also, share these with your friends. Um, I'm also I'm going to put them on YouTube. I'm going to continue this on. I'm going to try to do some kind of Wednesday teaching Bible study talk uh, from now on. So that's part of my uh, a new routine. Uh, so let me know. What would you like to hear about? If, would you like to walk through another book? Would you, would you like to have a topic? Uh, is there something that you really like to hear me wax eloquently on for the next six months. Isn't that a joy? Well, let's still call it joy, right, if you want to hear me wax eloquently. But anyhow, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, send me an email. Send me a text. i uh, love to keep this up. Just thanks for watching. Uh, I love to connect with you, and I love just to, to, to read your comments. So share this with some friends. Let me know what you might like to talk about, and we will see you around the Copa real soon in person. If not, see you next week as we unpack my favorite, favorite verses of Philippians. Have a great week. We love you all.